Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield here at the Las Vegas Hilton, which is one of the most legendary and most respected of all the hotels and casinos here in Las Vegas at a show called Rock Vault, which is home to the biggest and most brilliant talent. And Howard Lees is certainly one of them. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? It must be great to be you. I look at your career. I look at what you've done and it's extraordinary. And you're still here and you're still alive. It's a miracle. It's a miracle that I'm still alive, <laughs> I suppose so. When yeah. I look at what you guys have done and how long you've been doing it for, seriously though, it, it's a test on the heart, isn't it? Well, I made my first platinum record in 1973, so some of your listeners were probably in kindergarten. <laughs> it is incredible, and what a life it's been. When you stand there on stage now, I wonder how differently it feels from back in the day, let's go back 20 years, maybe 25 years, okay, 30 years. Mm -hmm. How does it feel when you stand on this stage doing those same numbers? Well, being on stage is really the only thing I've ever done. I've never had a real job. So I, you know, I play my guitar, it's, that's my job. And uh, it, it still, still feels pretty much the same as it did when I was you know, a teenager just starting out. It's a magical feeling. It's a powerful feeling. You draw energy from the audience. And uh, you know, in the back of your mind, you're concentrating on playing well and trying to do your best and trying to let the distractions go and, and focus on your instrument and what you're playing. But I can't deny that it's, a, it's great to interact with the audience and that, that's always part of the fun. Is there a moment within a certain song or a particular song where you're in your own zone and it's the bit you look forward to in every show? Is there still a moment that you really love and it's where you come into your own? Well, we introduced a song this year because we've added Carol Lynn, the female singer. So we're able to do a bit of a heart song. We do a little bit of Alone and uh, with the guitar solo. And so it's kind of funny. It's actually the most challenging thing I play during the night and it's my own fault because it's my solo, it's me on the record. But uh, that's fun because I'm playing my own thing there. So that, that's always uh, an interesting moment. And you can tell how many of the audience recognize and realize that, that fact. And so it's a, I always get a real warm feeling when they go, oh, that's, that's his solo. Whenever I interview big singers, whether it be Andrea Bocelli or Cliff Richard in the UK, I always say, do you wake up in the morning and go <clears throat> to make sure it's there? <laughs> when you wake up in the morning, do you do that just to make sure you've got feeling in all five fingers? Yeah, my hands so far have been uh, without issue. You know, I just keep telling myself that Segovia could play well till he was 90. Because some guys, you get carpal tunnel or whatever and you're, you're done. So, But so far, my hands have not been a problem for me. But uh, boy, I sure like Bocelli. He's a good man, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. great. There's talent for you. When you stand on stage and I watch you, I said this earlier to Doug, it's almost as if the guitar becomes part of you and what you do becomes part of it. How do you get the messages from here down to the fingers? Have you ever thought about that or is the key not thinking about that? Well, I think about that all the time and I tell people when you're, they're learning to play that learning to play well is really just breaking down the barriers between your brain and your hands and then the instrument. So uh, when you get to a certain level of fluency on the instrument, I can, I'm pretty much, what I'm, what I'm thinking and what I'm hearing in my head will come out of my hands and onto the guitar. I don't have to think about what my hands are doing too much. I've, I've broken down those barriers, my, my hands know where to go, and so I'm just sort of singing. I call it singing with my fingers. And you don't look at your fingers, do you? You know where they should be at the right time. Yeah, I generally I don't need to look very much, but you know, it's nice to check now and then yes. if you have a big leap or something <laughs> like that. Because what's, what's funny about the guitar is, here's the right note, and the very worst note you can hit is right on either side of the right note. If you're just one away, that's the very worst mistake you can make. If you're a couple notes away, it's not so bad, but right next to the right note, usually bad notes. So, but um, I, I generally don't think about my hands that much. I can pretty much play what I'm hearing in my head. And the trouble is with those solos, we all know them so well, so there's no faking it. You can't sort of pretend to do it. We all know if you're skipping bits. That's the great part of this show. We have to be authentic and we have to be faithful to some, and some of these are the, the most classic guitar solos of all time so Doug and I have a big handful of guitar solos every night and you pretty much have to nail it because as you say everybody knows how it's supposed to go and if you don't sound just like Don Felder or Jimmy Page or whoever it is that we're doing everybody's going to know it so uh, you have to be faithful to the original guys plus that's one of the things about the show it's so much fun 
we get to play some of the greatest bits all, f from all through rock, his rock history, classic rock history. And so it's an honor to play these parts that are some of the just trademark parts. And so it's great to play them. It's amazing this show hasn't been done somewhere else before because this music is so iconic, especially here in America. I mean, you guys love it. And it's the only show like this of its type in the city, probably in the country. I know. It's amazing, huh? <laughs> and we're into our second year now. We're halfway through our second year. So uh, it's, it's, it's huge fun for us. And like you say, here at the, this hotel, this is where Elvis was. So we stand on Elvis's stage. This is Elvis. We're sitting in Elvis's dressing room right now. So uh, that's special for us. You know, it's got a real rich history here. And so it's great to be part of that tradition. And again, there's a responsibility that you've got to knock it out of the park. Nobody's going to want half a performance, are they? That's true. But people seem to love this show. People come over and over again. We have people who've seen it 50, 60 times. They're just mad for it. And so we love it. I'd, I'd like to do it in London. You really should, because we really love your music. And the question I have to ask, which is a strange one, but what's it like to be you? When I think of your career and the longevity you've had, I mean, stars today, they come and go. They're mega stars within a minute, and they're gone within a year. Mm -hmm. You've sort of had a long path where you've been at the top of your game. Are there certain moments you look back and remember now and think that was incredible, that was remarkable, or does it just become one big blur? Well, no, there are fantastic gigs that I've done. Uh, every time I get to play the Albert Hall with Paul Rogers or a Bad Company, um, that's a special, special gig. I was inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame earlier this year with Hart, and uh, the original band played. First time in 30 years we played together, and so that was that was pretty special. But I play in England a lot. I'm in, I'm in a British band. I'm in Bad Company and the Paul Rogers Band. I've been with Paul for 17 years now. I was with him two days ago. <laughs> yeah, we I. I go out on the weekends during the summer and I play with Paul and I have a sub here at the Rock Vault. So, uh, you know, we, we tour in England quite a bit and so I love it there. And this show is very British oriented. The, the producers, Simon Napier Bell is one of the producers and he managed the Yardbirds when their two guitar players were Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page in the same band. And uh, it's a very British, you know, at least half the music is, is British classic rock, and my specialty is British classic rock, so it's a, it's a great thing, and I think it would be killer to do it in London. I mean, really, you should. I mean, you mentioned Paul Rogers there. I was lucky enough to see him live uh, only a few months ago. And I mean, this guy has got a phenomenal voice and talent. When you stand on stage with someone like that, do you ever consider that you must be on par or you wouldn't be there? Do you get into that or do you <laughs> just avoid it? I, I look around and, you know, I'm sort of used to being next to Paul, but when, when we do Bad Company and I have Simon Kirk on the drums behind me and, and I'm going, this is half of Free. Free was my favorite band, still my favorite band of all time. And I look around and I go, how did I get here? I'm from Hollywood. You know, I'm an American guitar player. How am I playing Mr. Big or All Right Now with the two guys that were in Free? It, it, it astonishes me now and then. I can't think about it too much. But uh, it's a huge honor and a privilege to play with Paul and Simon and, and Mick Ralphs when we do Bad Company. And we're doing Bad Company in this July. We're going out with Skinner again like we did last year. We had a huge tour last year. We're doing it again this year. And it's just, you know, it's humbling. And in a way, I, I can't believe that I, you know, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know, I'm not even British, but I, I play British music, so it's, I fit in. I mentioned earlier, it's still extraordinary to me that when I go to the Coliseum, there's Elton, there's Rod, there's Celine, and there's Shania, 50%. Mm -hmm. And then when I look at your radio stations, half the playlist is England, and we're so insignificant and tiny. I don't know what it is, how we've managed to create so much impacting music that's taken the world by storm um, on par with America. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Well, I think British mu rock musicians are the finest in the world, and all the, all the greatest bands, in my opinion, are British. I mean, there's never been we have some good American bands don't get me wrong but you know come on Pink Floyd Led Zeppelin the Stone. I saw the Stones in 64 when they were first starting I, I, I consider British rock the very best rock when you go on stage tonight there you will be under that pin focus and you have to nail it what extra energy do you have to put in today to equal what you did 30 years ago or is it just the same you still find that place well usually I'm here all day and it's a I just ramp my day up, but this morning I woke up at 
seven in the morning in Berkeley, California, where my nephew was graduating from the University of California, Berkeley, and I had to go to the graduation ceremonies, then get on a plane, fly from there to Vegas, get right over here, do a little rehearsal and go right on stage. So I'm gonna have to dig a little little deep tonight. I may be a little bit tired from all the traveling, but you know, once the music starts, somehow you, you just seems to take over and give me the energy to get through it. It's been a real honor talking to you. Congratulations right. on being you. Thank you so much for your time. And I can't wait to see the show shortly. Okay, Thank good. you. Enjoy it.